School and your own Fighting Irish of St. Vincent St. Mary High School. Let's meet the starting lineup for both ball clubs. First, for the Spartans of Boardman, leading off and playing center field, a senior, number two, Marty Shakowitz. Hitting second, the first baseman, a junior, number 16, Grayson Eicher. Hitting in the hurt, third hole, the pitcher designated hitter, a sophomore, number 14, Tyler Curlick. Hitting fourth, the left fielder, a junior, number 22, Landon Wimpo. In the fifth position, the shortstop, a junior, number 13, Ivan Rudiak. Hitting sixth for the Spartans, the third baseman, a senior, number eight, Ben Herman. In the seventh position, the second baseman, a junior, number 12, Tommy Barley. Doing the catching and hitting eighth, a senior, number four, Charlie Young. And hitting ninth, the right fielder, senior, number one, Adam Conner. And now the rest of the roster of the Boardman Spartans, along with head coach Joe Gabriel, assistant coaches Bob Mingo, Joe Bendick, and Joe Robb. And now let's meet the Fighting Irish of St. Vincent St. Mary High School. Leading off and playing center fielder, a senior, number seven, Max Milkovich. Hitting second for the Fighting Irish, the right fielder, a sophomore, number 18, Rylan Hurley. Doing the catching, a senior, number 30, Daniel Crabo. Hitting in the fourth position, the shortstop, a senior, number two, Devin Lehman. Hitting fifth, the pitcher, a junior, number six, Tyler Sloan. Hitting sixth for the Irish, the third baseman, a junior, number nine, Zach Kirkey. The designated hitter for the Irish, hitting seventh, the freshman, number 14, Matt, Matt Engelhart. Hitting eighth, the second baseman, a junior, number four, Ashton Pimisarian. In ninth, the left fielder, a junior, number 12, Sammy Robinson.
beautifully redone Skills Field home of the Akron Zips and the new home of the Saints. Welcome to Akron, Ohio, as we bring you Keon Sports Game of the Week as the St. Vincent St. Mary Fighting Irish host the Youngstown Boardman Spartans. I am Nate this will be on the call for you this afternoon. And what looks to be a great game between two teams who want to make a statement in a doubleheader. St. V's still has to take on the Green Wave, who knocked them out of the playoff last year at Summit Lake Park last May. They'll to get revenge in that game. First pitch of that contest being at 2.30 on Holy Name Athletics YouTube. Double duty for me to two different media outlets getting coverage from the focus on the from the, the Akron area and the Maroon area from the Youngstown area. A senior, Daniel Gravel, leading off for the Portland Spartans, the center fielder of senior number two, Marty Stackowitz. As you hear a period announcer say, leading off the board of Spartan is Marty Stackowitz, the center game rolling well for the board men's Spartans on the bump. For the same visit, St. Mary Fighting Irish, they have Tyler Sloan, Sloan, the junior, one of the four captains, one of the two junior captains, looks to pitch as well as he did in his two appearances thus far this year that has him at a 1 ERA. Just off the plate to begin the day, 1-0 count, first pitch, clocking in at 11.32 a.m. Sloan so far, like I said, 1 ERA, 2-0 record, 9 hits, 4 runs, 2 earned runs, one walk, 13 Ks in 14 innings of work. This time finds the zone to even it up one and one, just hits the low portion of the plate. Both pitcher and batter looking to adjust the strike zone of the ump behind the dish this afternoon. Here's the one one from Sloan. Swing and a miss, hardy cut, tried getting underneath it, and now finds itself down one and two with Iker, the first baseman who's up next. In the visiting bullpen, the Spartans pitcher is warming up. We will see Tyler Kerlick, the number three hitter, most likely in this inning regarding anything crazy such as a last-second stretch. The 2-2 two -two count, that one off the plate. For them so far, this is 1-3 with their only win coming against East Ridge, winning that game in nine innings against the Florida outfit a couple weeks ago. The 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball chopped to the left side. And it'll be called foul. So just barely not getting down the line. It most likely would have been a throw out in time over at third, but still a tough throw. Nothing gimme on this field, especially from Kirky on that far side. A long throw, but nonetheless, we'll see a 2 2 offering once again. Stackowitz steps back into the box. 2-2 two, two count. Sloan comes set and delivers. Chopped up the middle. The half swing. Sloan picking up and toss over to larger for the afternoon. Half swung right back. Sloan easy put out as now the number two hitter Grayson Iker steps into the box for his first cut. For the Spartans, the first baseman, the junior, number 16, Grayson Iker. Iker, a junior, will step in the lefty, first lefty that Sloan will have to deal with. Here's his first offering. Shopped right side foul. Start off nothing in one. So far, two foul balls. One down the left field line, this one down the right. Sloan definitely challenging the Boardman batters thus far, giving him hittable pitches. But as of right now, Sloan, one for one on retiring a batter. The 0 1 bunt being shown. Can't get it back as he tries to take it down the line. He now finds himself in a nothing and two hole with the pitcher, Kerlick, due up next. So 0 2 count, one away, top of the first. Sloan getting the call in from his catcher, Crable, will come set. Now here's the 0 2. Outside in the other batter's box, makes it now 1 2 count. Don't mind that pitch at all from Sloan. 0-2 count. All the power is in the pitcher's hands at that point. Try to get him to chase him something outside. You don't have to pitch to him, even on the 1-2. I would say challenge him again with something off speed. Let's see what Sloan does on the 1-2. Look, like they had a little misses outside in the other batter's box. 
two two count. Eicher taking a second to gather himself upon re-entry to the box. Sloan will set on the bump and deliver. In the zone, foul behind, hitting the netting. Without the net, that would have shattered some glass behind us. But nonetheless, Eicher will fight and get another life. So once again, another 2-2 two -two count, one away. Both batters have made decent contact thus far, but still St. V's looking for out number two. Here comes the 2-2 from Sloan. Smokes foul to the left side. A little bit more power and a little bit further down the line. So once again, Iker sees another life down. Nothing in two on two pitches. Has fought his way to a 2-2 count and has fouled off two pitches in a row. Even if he does get out, this is a quality at bat for the first baseman. You're making Sloan work on the mound, which could come in handy down the stretch if he gets into the hundreds of the pitching count. Right back up the middle to short, and a little bit of an ole out there as it goes into the outfield. It's been an error, so that will have Iker reach on an E6. So the second batter of the inning is on a board after the error over at shortstop by Devon Lehman. So now Kerlick, the pitcher, will step in with a runner at first. Large will go over to hold him on as he takes a couple step lead over on the right side. Sloan will set. Wind and deliver. Swing and miss. Actually, no, you're give a little bit of foul contact. Hurt at the last second. Nothing in one count nonetheless. Steelers need to get used to the turf and how the ball skips. If not, it might be a rough afternoon for both ball teams. Sloan will set once again. Delivers outside. Crable thought about the pick. Instead, holds on to it. Evens it up at one and one. As a catcher in this situation, you have to be in two with your pitcher and your first baseman. You've got to give the right calls in this situation. You have to know if a back pick can possibly happen to try to bail the defense out a little bit. You have to back pick from the pitcher, not in time. Excellent step off move, but an excellent slide nonetheless from Iker. One on one count on Kerlick with Landon Whippa, the left fielder, due up next for the Spartans. Another attempt to pick him off. Another slide head first in for Iker. St. V's making him work over at first base. He's trying to get enough of a lead as he gets the kind of the second cutout of the grass if he's facing in the one that is to his right on our angle to the left. Wind pitch. Runner goes. Popped up the middle. He might need to run back. He won't need to run back. He's in no man's land. The gun from center field is not in time as the tag was missed from large. The right idea by Milkovic out in center just couldn't have enough juice on the ball, and that will have Iker retreat with just enough time as he got under the tag. But nonetheless, two away. For the Spartans, the left fielder, junior number 22, Landon Whippo. So now we will see Landon Whippo step up for his first cuts of this afternoon's ball game. So far today, one error that Iker reached on. Sloan will set and deliver. Pops up into the stratosphere and will trail out of play to the left side. Second ball that has been smoked over in that direction. Nothing in one count to begin the at-bat on Whippo. Whippo as well. He can hit, but also he can pitch. In the win against East Range earlier this month, he went six and one-thirds innings with a 1.11 ERA after that. I believe he gave up both runs that East Range gave up in that game. It was in the seventh inning that they came back and made the game competitive. They made it 2-2 and fought their way to extras where they ended up winning that game in nine. Oh, one count on Whippo. The pitch well outside. The back pick not in time. Good idea by Crable. Just kind of took his first base and off the bag. So after the pitch out, it's a 1-1 one -one count with two away. Due up next for the Spartans is Rudiak, the shortstop. So now Whippo will step out of the box, and that will have Iker retreat back to first. Large still holding him on over at first base for St. Vincent St. Mary. Sloan takes a peer over his left shoulder and delivers. 
Line to the left side into no man's land. That will fall for a base hit as it just lands in front of Robinson in left. So now two aboard with two away as now Ivan Rudiak steps into the box for his first cut with one in scoring position. Heading in the fifth position, stepping in for the Spartans the shortstop, a junior number 13, Ivan Rudiak. Rudiak. All he has to do is get a poke. Looking where the outfield is situating themselves. Out in center field where Makovic is right now. He's over to the left side where the 390 sign is. Apo Taco, that could be extra bases easily. As he finds his zone, nothing on count to get this at bat. An excellent pitch from Sloan, just nicking the corner. Sloan just trying to get out of this inning. Takes two looks a second and delivers. He fouled over the right side. You can tell Rudiak's trying to poke the ball into that right center field gap, but now he's down to his final strike. 0-2, two away in the top of the first. St. D's trying to get it out of a slight little jam. Sloan comes set, checks once, checks twice, and delivers. Misses high, 1-2 count. Challenging pitch, trying to get him with the high heat. But Rudiak keeps his composure and doesn't bite. Once again, Sloan gets the call from his catcher, Crable. He tries to retire the side once again, but one, two. Line to the left side and will fall in the gap for extra bases. The cutoff is there to prevent the extra bases, but will still lead to a run for the Spartans. It's one, nothing. An excellent job in the outfield to cut it off. But nonetheless, Boardman takes an early advantage. Just a nice little poke from Rudiak into left field. It looked like it was about to shoot the gap, but I believe in center field it was Mikovic. He came in out of nowhere and snatched it. If he was not there, then easily I could have seen that being a two-run double at minimum. But nonetheless, it's one nothing as Herman, the catcher, will step in for his first cuts with the same situation that his shortstop was just in. Sloan will come set. Now the pitch. Off the plate. 1-0 count to begin the at-bat. For Sloan this year, that will be the fifth run he's surrendered. But as a trend is starting to present itself, still only two earned runs on the year. So three of his five runs have been unearned. Field come set. Still trying to get out of this inning. The wind and the delivery. Chopped at it. Getting to swing. Evens it up at 1-1. One one. That'll be the second kind of chopped swing from Boardman. The first came back at the first at bat from Sashewitz that kind of just went right back up the middle of Sloan. Sloan will come set. Takes one look over at second base and delivers. Once again, running inside, missing where he did in the last pitch. This time, no swing. 2 1 count. In the event, Herman gets on base to second base, but Tommy Varley will be due up next. For the Spartans, who will already have a one nothing lead. The back pick the first. It's close and not in time. A diving slide from Rudiak gets him back in time. It's a good idea over on the mound from Sloan to try to get him. He's done a couple back pick and step off moves. Just hasn't been able to finish the job. It's been close, but still, nonetheless, we play on. Swing and a miss on one upstairs. Evens it up at two and two. Once again, a two-two count. At least the third time we've seen it this inning. Two's all the way around. Two balls, two strikes, two away in the top of the first. Sloan will check and deliver. Shot to the right side, foul. Hit off of the dugout and go out of play. So we'll see a two-two offering once again. Give credit to Boardman. The drive from Youngstown to Akron to then come off the bus, to have to hit first, and make Sloan work. They're now on their sixth hitter of the inning, and a couple of these at-bats have gone for a good six, seven pitches by now. They're starting to wear down Sloan a little bit as same Ds. They're going to need to give them a minute to breathe in the dugout. They're going to need to give them a couple of quality at-bats as they'll have the center fielder Makovic, right fielder Hurley, and the catcher Crable all do up in the bottom of the first.
Sloan comes set, trying to still retire the side. He'll check second and deliver. Swing and a miss. He strikes out Herman to retire the side, but not before the Boardman Spartan to get on the board the first, courtesy of an RBI single from the Ivan Rudiak. Half an inning played at Skeels Field. It's the Spartans leading 1 0. We'll take a break and be back on in a minute. And in between innings, we'll give you our ad reads from our sponsors. If you're looking to be a sponsor here at Keon Sports, make sure you contact Vince McKee, and he will talk about sponsorship packages with you, starting with Mickey Mart. The moose is on the loose at Mickey's. Your local Mickey's is open now for the food and fuel you need to keep your family moving. Be sure to use your Mickey Mart rewards card to quickly rack up amazing member-only deals, including free food and beverages. Mickey's is a proud supporter of our local school systems through our Fuel Schools program and excited to team up with Keon Sports to bring you all the finest moments in local sports and information and entertainment. Search for Mickey Mart or visit www. MickeyTheMoose.com. That's MickeyTheMoose.com to find a location near you. Next up on our sponsor reads, we have Climate Tech Incorporated. At Climate Tech Incorporated, we provide top quality heating and air conditioning and ventilation services focused on your comfort. Their goal is to provide the communities of Western Cuyahoga and Lorain County with the best resolution and a complete repair on our first Visit Professional HVAC Services in North Ridgeville, Ohio. Their website, climate-tech.com. That's climate-tech.com. As we return to the action at the bottom of the first, it's 1-0 in favor of the Boardman Spartans, courtesy of Ivan Rudiak. Catcher, senior Charlie Young, and stepping in and leading off for St. Vincent St. Mary, the center fielder, senior number seven, Max Milkovich. Their PA announcer said Max Milkovich will step into the box for his first cut of the afternoon. His involvement so far has been probably saving a run out in center as he did an excellent job to shoot the gap that was shot by Rudy. If that could have been extra bases, but he was in the right place at the right time, playing more in left center and cut it off. Here comes the first pitch of the afternoon from Kerlick, and it will be a ball outside. So Milkovich, Hurley, and Cravel all do up this inning for the Fighting Irish. Kerlick deals. Fouled away to the right side as it goes over the netting. Evens it up at one and one. Going into today's game, St. Vincent St. Mary averaging eight and a half runs per game while allowing four and a quarter runs per game. Kerlick will wind and deliver the one one. Fouled away once again to make it one two count. As well, looking at their schedule, they had some great wins especially in Ohio, looking at the win they had against Oswego, the 32nd-ranked team in all of Ohio. So their one loss to Lutheran West really skewed the numbers. If you take away that game, it's nine runs per game and only 2.71 allowed. That's the difference that one game made in their splits. But going back to it, it's a lot closer of a split after that game. Well, sometimes you just need to kind of take one on the chin, and they did in that game and bounced back really well. Here's a 2-2 two -two from Kerlick. Ground ball goes to the left side and right past the third baseman. He tries staying near the ball and couldn't see it in. So Herman will then lead to Milkovich getting on with a leadoff single, I guess we're going to call it. I don't think he made contact with it. It's one of those kind of fine lines. We're going to say error in the box. Did he touch it? Did he not? Doesn't really matter. We'll call it an E5. The right fielder, sophomore number 18, Ryland Hurley. Nonetheless, Hurley steps out the leadoff man aboard as Kerlick, the sophomore, will step off the mound for a brief moment. Kerlick, in two appearances this year, has a 4.67 ERA for the Spartans. He'll come set and deliver up high. 1-0 count to begin the at-bat as Lukovic is starting to work over at first base, trying to get a lead. Iker's trying to hold him on over there, getting a similar lead to that of Iker in the last inning. Kirk will check on him a couple of times as he elongates the lead and throws back well in time with the diving slide. 
Curlick focusing on batter and base runner alike, trying to keep him honest, but also trying to go through this inning. 1-0 count, the pitch. Misses low. Makes it now a 2-0 count. Curlick will take a second off the mound to regather himself before taking his step back onto it, looking just to settle on into this game. Curlick peering on in, getting the call behind the dish from his catcher, Young. He sets, nods, delivers, swing and a miss on one down the pipe. First strike of the at-bat. A little bit of heat thrown on it. It gets the job done. And as well, for Curlick in this game, you're playing one of the best teams in Ohio. As a sophomore, it has to be a pressure situation for you. So how he handles this game can really impact the season. He made a move, bobbled away, and will still have Mikovich get back in safe. Curlick moved at the right time as Mikovich started to kind of get an extra lead, had him beat. But just the last second bobble gets him back to the bag. The pitch from Curlick swing and a miss. He was up in two and two. Curlick's done a nice job to battle back in this at bat when he was down 2 0 in the count. Curlick will peer on in, shake off a couple pitches, agree with this one. Come set. Here's the 2 2 offering. Line to the left side, just past the outstretched shortstop, and that's a base hit. Going to third is Lukovic. The throw is not in time as he slides head first. Runners at the corners with none away. The first two on. St. V's is getting the offense rolling as they have done well many times this season. Still got to give credit over at short to Rudiak. He laid out for it, did his best, just beat him. And now at the corners, Daniel Cravel steps in as an opportunity to be dangerous, as he usually is. The Oberlin commit looks to get his team tied back up with the Spartans. Going back to last year, Crable in the playoff game against Fulminane played a big impact in why they led for parts of that game and kept it really close up until the final inning. Kirk will set the delivery. And they call it a strike, a little bit low from our angle. Nothing I want to count to begin this at bat on Daniel Crable, the senior. Curlick will check on over the runner at first. Nods and delivers. Misses high. 1-1 one, one count. Especially in the high school game, you need to take a look over at first base offense runners at the corners. A lot of the base runners think it's a gimme base to go to second as the throwdown's there. You're just going to see the, whoever's on third jog on home and celebrate a run. Curlick comes set, nods, delivers, runner goes. No contact, it's pass ball. St. V's to tie the game up, will do so. Makovic striding on in, it's a pass ball behind the catcher Young. It's 1-1. Well, there you go. Now runner in scoring position once again at second base. So Hurley is now the go-ahead run. There's a one-two count as Crable swung. Technically, he got the job done. So now Curlick working to try and get out number one in the inning. He now has two errors from his defense and one hit, and now the step off will happen. In the four hole is Devin Lehman for St. Beast. He is due up next. Curlick will take a look back over at second base. No one really holding the pitch. Ground ball right side. And will bobble away. There's a chance to make a play. He does. A nice little slide from Crable. Not in time. But a couple of bobbles in the field. Varley did a nice job to keep him in front of him for out number one. But that will advance Hurley over to third. He is now 90 feet away from giving St. V's the lead. Coming in for the Irish, the cleanup hitter, a shortstop. Senior number two, Devin Lehman. So now Lehman, the cleanup hitter, has a chance to clean up the base path a little bit. A little bit of a poke or a fly out. That would most likely score Hurley. The lineup and the pitch. Going to find that zone, the ump favoring that low inside pitch. Nothing in one count to begin the at bat. So Lehman going into this game leads the team in RBIs with 11 and slugging percentage and doubles. 
and triples as well. Let's see what else he leads in, just going around the grounds. That's what he leads in. So impressive from him this year. He has dominated. Krillick will set on the bump, wind, and deliver. It's sky to the right side, most likely too shallow to send him. And he is going to send him. It's Bobble. It's going to be an error, and we'll score a run, so St. Beast takes the lead. If you would have caught it, it might have been too shallow, but no contest. It's dropped, and St. Beast takes the lead 2-1. to one. So now that is the second error of the inning from the field. The third overall from, Saint, from Boardman. The wind definitely playing a factor, but nonetheless, it's two to one. As now the pitcher Sloan steps in. The throw back to first, not in time, as Lehman will slide back on in. So both teams trying to get used to the turf, but this time it's just the wind. The slide step, followed directly behind, makes it now an 0-1 count. As well, this afternoon, stay tuned as St. Louis and St. Mary will welcome in Holy Name at 2.30 for game two of their doubleheader. That game is broadcast live on Holy Name Athletics YouTube. Kerlick will come set the windup and the pitch. Thought about it, but we'll stay home. It's up to count of one and one. Layman, so far this year, you see him over... At first base, 440 average, 11 hits, and now 11 RBIs, three doubles, and one triple. Krillick nods, delivers, just misses off the plate. 2 1 count, good miss from him. Slowing the pitcher in the box is here. 318 average, 22 at bats. Five runs, seven hits, seven ribbies, and a double to his name. This is outside. 3 1. The baseman due up next. Found out with and an error at and saved his offense. The 3 1. Finds the zone, makes it four. Well, 3-2-1. Yeah. will check on over at first. Home set, now delivers. Runner will go. He holds up. No contest. It's ball four. So now two are on with the first walk of the afternoon as we will have a mound visit. And as we have this mound visit, we will a word from our sponsors. James McConville of Helene Kia. For over two decades, sales James McConville of Helene Kia in North Olmsted on Lorraine Road has been your trusted source for all new and used vehicles. With knowledge of the car buying industry and experience you can trust, McConville makes sure the customer is sat satisfied safe and drives away in a car they can afford but also enjoy. Visit him today at 27932 Lorraine Road in North Olmsted. Once again, that is 27932 Lorraine Road in North Olmsted. JBL Roofing and Construction. JBL was founded by the Lewis family of Kent, Ohio in 2005 to provide residents with a reliable, professional, and high-quality level of service. Fast forward to today, JBL Roofing and Construction has been one of Northeast Ohio's most trusted roofing and siding companies performing the highest quality work on over 3,000 roofs and projects. Their website is https forward slash www.jblrc.com. As we're two on with one away, Zach Kirky, the third baseman, steps up for his first touch of the afternoon. Kerlick on the mound for Boardman trying to get out of this jam. The pitch finds his RBIs to him. 
You have an opportunity to add RBI number to the campaign right now. It's an 0-1 count. Curler checks second and delivers. Inside 1-1 one, one count. I like the idea from Curler. The ump has liked to call that pitch a strike this afternoon. This time just runs it a little bit too close to Kirky. Kerlick will now set set back up. Runner is at first and second. Pitch. This is high and inside. Two one count. Kerlick starting to lose him. There is action over in the Boardman bullpen as they're trying to get another arm ready. Trying to take a look on who it is. The distance a little bit too far. Can't really tell. We'll give you an update on when we tell who it is. This is high. 3-1 count. I believe it's here in the bullpen over there for Boardman. So 3-1. Steve Beasley leading 2-1 with a walk. The bases would then from Matthew Engelhart, the designated hitter. Curlick sets the 3-1. Down the middle. Pop to the right side. It could stay in play and will just go a couple feet out to the right making the count full. Big pitch. And then send Engelhart, who has batted really well this year as a freshman. 375 average, who has three RBIs to his name. But more impressively, already has three doubles, which is tied for second most on the team with Devin Lehman, only trailing Daniel Crable, who has four. Juice after two walks and an error. So the designated hitter will step up first cuts and can blow this game open in the bottom of the first. Coming in for St. Vincent St. Mary, the number seven hitter, designated hitter, a freshman number 14, Matt Engelhart. Engelhart, six hits so far. On After Angle Hart, it's Ashen Tams are in back to the top of the order for the Ashen. Over at second base by Tommy Dillon, he gives his pitcher some help for a loud out number two. That makes up for the error just gone. Coming in for the Irish, the number eight hitter. Second baseman is junior number four, Ashton Tamzarian. I feel like anytime we see a catch like that, you just have to have the cough by Fernando Auto running through your head. It was a nice catch over at second base by Varley. Respect to him as he gives his pitcher some real good help as a defense. They kind of struggled for him today. So two away, the bases are still loaded. Ground ball left side to step on third. Yes, he does. Herman does it and retires aside, but the not before St. Pete's can put.
Yep. This broadcast is sponsored by Kelly McLean Achievement Center. Kelly and the KMAC team become part of each family coaching students on how to learn, how to study, how to achieve their academic potential while discovering their true goals. All of this is accomplished with a strengths-driven approach and comprehensive plan to help students dem demystify college selection and career planning. You can visit the website at https forward slash www.kelly-mac.com forward slash Spins Bowl. The Spins Bowl Independence location is a 47,000 square foot place of pure fun. Bowl on our 36 professional lanes or play one of our 33 top industry video arcade games. Check them out today for all of their locations in Kent, Akron, and Independence. Their website https forward slash spinsbowl.com forward slash as come on Eileen plays over the speakers here at Steel Steel. We go into the second inning with St. Life right now up two to one over the boardman. Spartan Diane Nathan sitting on the call for you this afternoon. So now Varley steps in with Young and Connor to do up next for the Spartan Sloan will deal. Finds a zone, nothing in one count to begin this at bat. Sloan last inning allowing one run not earned as the runner reached on an error over at third base from Kirky. Sloan, the 0-1. Swing and a miss as he gets Varley's swing through it. Nothing and two. And flashing back to the bottom of the first, Varley flashed a level with a nice snag in the air for out number two, that retired Englehart. Sloan will come set trying to retire Varley, but Varley will step out before the pitch and take a second to regather himself. Boardman started this game off with momentum. St. B's has taken it back. Here is the 0-2 from Sloan. Misses outside. Make it now a 1-2 count. Kind of a trend I'm kind of noticing here, just looking at the way these games have gone. Not a lot of strikeouts for these pitchers. Sloan has the highest amount with 13 now 14 on was including today's with his follow to the right side, keeping it at one and two. But for Boardman, in the win they had in nine innings, only six strikeouts. I'm not surprised that St. V's has not struck out today. I would not be surprised if they have a minimal amount by the end of the game. While St. V's, they might even not have many strikeouts. Can Sloan get his 15th on the year on the one two? He'll have to wait another pitch as he misses outside, two two count. Sloan so far this year, only trailing Connor Christie in ERA as Christie has a .81 ERA. Sloan sets the pitch. Once again, misses outside. What was once an 0-2 count is turn full. Due up next is the catcher, Charlie Young. Three, two, none away. Sloan will come set and offer his payoff. Fouled away once again by Varley. He fights for another life. And I said in the top of the first boardman, it was a successful inning, not only for the run, but just for the sole fact of they made Sloan work. It's not one, two, three, done. One, two, three, done. Not at all. They're making a pitch now. This could be pitch, I believe, number eight of the at-bat. If you keep doing this, Sloan's bound to get tired by the end of the game, and St. Beast needs to be careful with how they manage their pitchers, given this is a doubleheader. Once again, shot to the right side by Varley, so he will now see another pitch. you got to give credit to the second baseman for battling in here and keeping this one close. It's still only a one-run game, even though St. V's loaded the bases and just kept the offensive onslaught going. The defense of Borman held up in the end and kept it within an arm's reach. There's only one swing of the bat away from changing the game back to the way it was. Sloan will come set once again. Here is his payoff. Runs in on him, so he loses Varley. And leadoff man is aboard for the Spartans. Charlie Young in the eight hole will step up for his first cut to this.
Well, technically, only one of them were his run. Run being shown. Gotten down to the right side. Sloan trails. Foot race tags on the runner. Gets a second. But nonetheless, out number one achieved. I like the idea. They tried executing that in the first inning from Eckner, but just couldn't lay it down. This time, you now move Varley in a scoring position for Connor, the right fielder. In the right fielder, senior number one, Adam Connor. So Connor, the poke in the outfield, could tie the game back up at two. Sloan checks second and delivers. Swing and a miss. You can tell Connor's thinking about tying the game back up with that swing. Nothing in one count to begin the at-bat. Right now for Bordenden, it's getting base runners on and moving that lead runner. Doesn't matter how you do it. You still have another out to give. You can do something with it. Runs in on him, evens up at one and one. After Connors, we go back to the top of the lineup with Marty Stackowitz. Crable giving signs to Sloan. Sloan agrees on the pitch. Will come set for the one-one. Chopped right back to Sloan. Throws to third. There's now a rundown between second and third. Runner safe at first. The throw back to second is in time to get the lead. Runner Sloan made the right move in the end for out number two. A smart heads up play by the pitcher. Pitcher fielding plays. There's a reason you practice them, ladies and gentlemen. Coming in for the Spartans. Number two, Marty Stackowitz. All right, now we're back up top to Stackowitz. So now two away, runner at first as Connor reached on the fielder's choice, basically. The overcomplicated fielder's choice. Oh, one to begin this on Stackowitz, who grounded up the middle on the chop swing to Sloan in the first. A one count with two away. Large holding on Connors at first. Connors leads definitely shorter than the other runners we've seen. Still a pickoff move attempted. He's back in time. But definitely a shy lead over at first. If Stakowitz makes his way onto the bases and the side is not retired, Grayson Eicher is due up next. Thought about it, instead holds up right decision as it evens up the count one and one. Beat it, bang, bang, throw. That's definitely the closest Sloan has been all afternoon. He's bound, if he keeps playing like this, to get a pickoff. And if you're Borman, you have to keep that in mind. As I said, a shy lead, that's the reason why. If he took the lead that the other players on the team have been taking, he was definitely a dead duck. Runner will go. Nonetheless, a throw. The Until the way it left Crable's hand, that's not where he wanted the ball to go. Just released a little bit too high, but a nice job over at second base to keep it in front of him. That's our first stolen bag of the game for Connor. So now, once again, a runner in scoring position with a 2 1 count for Stakowitz. Sloan will take a step, second two step off. Two one two away in the top of the second. Sloan checks runner at second and and Sloan gets K number two. We'll take a break. Step aside. It's two one.
This broadcast is sponsored by B.A. Sweetie. The world's most famous candy company is right here in our backyard. B.A. Sweetie is located at 6770 Berkeley in Cleveland. It is a candy place to have every candy from your childhood. Visit them today. Their website, HTTPS forward slash www.sweetiescandy.com forward slash. Next up on our sponsor reads is Dave's Golden Shear Barber Shop. For over a century of great haircuts, go where the pros go and cut hair. And experience a great haircut today. When you do, you'll become not only a customer, but a friend. Visit them on their website at http forward slash forward slash. Anna, Jennifer Heron Underwood. An agent for 24 years. She brings her clients expertise with every transaction. She specializes with first time sellers, senior citizens, downsizing, right sizing. From the west side of Cleveland and Cuyahoga County to Lorraine County, especially southern Lorraine County, she'll have you covered. Visit her website at https forward slash Jennifer Heron dash Underwood dot Howard dot com forward slash. Robinson, Large, and two up in the bottom of the second as they find themselves up two to one over the board men sponsor. Number 18, Dustin Cross stepping in for the Irish. The left fielder, a junior number 12, Sammy Robinson. As you can hear, the Spartans, it's Dustin Cross on the bump. He will deal his first pitch of the game as it finds a zone on Robinson. Nothing in one count to begin the at-bat. So as Robinson, your question is Robinson, Milkovich, and Hurley do up this inning for St. V's. Cross sets, delivers, misses outside, one and one count. Robinson so far this year, only seven plate appearance. This will be his eighth, batting 600 with three hits to his name so far. Cross will come set. Here is his 1-1 delivery. Swing and a miss makes Robinson now down 1-2. and two. Milkovich waiting in the on-deck circle, looking to get his second cuts of the afternoon. Reach on an error back in bottom of the first. Cross will set and deliver. Goes over the head of Robinson, almost clipped his bat, evens it up at 2-2. Two and two. Perlick in that last inning gave up two runs, loaded the bases. He will most likely still stay in the DH for the Spartans. The 2-2 two -two also runs inside on Robinson. Now a 3-2 count. And now the head coach for Boardman will come out and talk to the official. So now return back to the dugout. The full count on the first at-bat of the inning. The payoff upcoming from Cross. Skied into the air. And that will land right in front of us. So now it's a 3-2 count Here once again. Morning. So there we go. The fan could not make the catch. Unfortunately, this is not Savannah Banana Baseball. If he did make the catch, then that would have been an out in Banana Ball. And still, nonetheless, Borman will have another man up in the bullpen warming up. The payoff from Cross. Line to the left side, base hit on the ground from Robinson. There's a reason he has a 600 batting average and minimal appearances. He's earning some more as he is the leadoff, not the leadoff man, but the first man aboard of the inning. For the Irish. Number two, correction number seven, Max Milkovich. So now Milkovich back up to the top of the lineup with Hurley due up next. Cross will come set. Takes a look down and delivers. This is high of 1-0 counts again the at-bat. Young thought about looking over at first at Robinson. 
still this year. Borman struggled on the offensive, 3.75 runs per game while allowing almost eight runs per game on average. Delivery from Cross just misses inside, 2-0 count. Just another good miss on the bump from Cross. Ran a little bit too inside. It was pretty close. That's the spot where they want to be as the officials kind of gone away from calling that a strike as they did more in the first inning. 2-0 count, Cross nods and delivers down the pipe. First strike of the at-bat makes it 2-1 and one on Stakowicz. Stakowicz heading in to today's ball game. Let me find him on the stat sheet. It appears we cannot. Look at that. Do not have batting stats for him as of today. Mixes outside. 3-1 count. Carson Milkovich is up. There we go. Look. Back We're back here, a little bit of technical difficulties. Robinson got in a rundown and somehow got to third base on a drop ball. Can't explain it. Two in scoring position still for Hurley. The 2 1 count cross. He will come set the wind and the delivery. Thought about it, but finds his zone. Evens it up at 2 and 2. 2 2 count with Crable, the catcher, due up next for the Fighting Irish. Cross will come set, wind, and deliver the 2-2. Chop to the left side, over a third. The throw to the plate is off kilter, and not in time as Robinson slides on in to make it a 3-1 ball game in favor of the Fighting Irish. So Robinson, been a little bit of a speed demon on the paces, somehow got to third, and somehow scores. Just a little bit of a wide throw. The Irish. Nonetheless, the it's 3-1. And now runners at the corners with none away for Crables. He steps up for his second cuts. He grounded out over to second base his first time up. Cross looking on in. Come set. Now the pitch. Swing and a miss. Swung right through it. Nothing on count being Crables at bat. So now runners still at the corners here. One run has crossed. Boardman still has action in their bullpen, trying to keep a fresh arm ready, most likely for the next inning. Cross will set on the mound and deliver. This is high. He evens it up at one and one. Crable, the Overland Commission, so far this year, batting five. 
into today with 14 hits, 7 RBIs, and a team leading 4 doubles. He also leads the slugging percentage with 720. The pitch. Runs in. He throws it into the outfield. The runner juked him out. And now St. V's will make it 4-1. to one. I don't understand why he threw it. He clearly stopped in his tracks. Nonetheless, St. V's leads 4-1. to one. Runner still stays at first, but man, Borman just trying to get out number one of the inning. The pitch finds the zone, makes it now two to two. Still a four to one ball game in the bottom of the second inning. St. B's scoring two runs in each of the first two innings. Cross will come set. Here's the pitch. Runner goes as it's skied into right center. Hurley will run for it. And he falls backwards and makes the catch for out number one. The wind took it just slightly. But Satchewitz does an excellent job to get under it and keep his composure and help his pitcher out. The number two. Devin and now Devin Lehman steps up for his second cut breach on an error his first time up. But good awareness on the base path from Hurley to run back to first and he realized that ball was going to be caught. Earlier in the game, St. V's, I believe it was, reached back on one of those, but it was just because the throw was too short. The pickoff move not in time, tag not even applied over at first base from Eichert. Four to one, St. V's lead with one away. Cross will come set, nods and delivers. Runs inside once again. So take it now a full three and two count. Should be a one on count. Cross will come set, the line and the delivery. Misses low, catcher keeps it in front, evens it up. We're making out 2 0 count. Cross takes a look over at first base, trying to keep Hurley honest. The 2 0 delivery finds the zone to get right pitch, makes it now 2 1. Still up today at 2.30. St. V's welcomes on in Mahone and Greenway for a rematch of the 2023 OHSA Round 1 playoff. The lineup and the delivery. Ground ball left side just gets past the third baseman. Outstretched for a base hit from Lehman, the shortstop. So now two on with one away for St. V's as looking on to add on to their advantage. The Irish, number six, Tyler Sloan. Herman did all he could over at first base, diving for it, just snuck right past him. It's now Sloan, who walked his first time up, steps back into the box. Cross will come set. Takes a couple looks over at second base and delivers. Hits him. A walk and a hard 90 at the plate today for Tyler Sloan as the bases are now loaded. So Kirky, who walked his first time, has a chance to really blow this game wide open. Stepping in for St. Vincent J. Mary, number nine, Zach Kirky. Cross trying to get out number two, trying to battle in this inning. The change looks to be upcoming as the warming up has stopped in the Boardman bullpen. Cross delivers. Swing and a miss. You can tell Kirky is looking for the green grass of the outfield. It's nothing in one count. In a 4-1 game, though, you really can't blame the kid for trying to swing for the fences. They're leading by three. Why not try to give it a nice little ride out in the left or right? The pitch. 
This time it's skied in the infield over to second base at Varley. Infield fly gets him out for out number two. So now it goes back to Matthew Engelhardt, who had the bases loaded his Good first time up, where a web jam over at second Matt base from Engelhardt. Tommy Varley prevented any runs. So two innings now of St. V scoring two runs and having the bases loaded. This time, they look to add on to it and not leave the bases juice going into the next inning. Cross comes set. The freshman, Engelhardt, trying to add a couple RBIs to his young career. Nice block behind the dish to prevent any damage by Young. Makes it a 1-0 count. Besides the pass ball in the first inning, he's done a nice job blocking today. As a lot of low pitches in the dirt that he's tried to kind of scoop up and frame has made a difference. Cross delivers. Shop left side and will go foul towards the St. Jude's dugout. So even on an afternoon like this, the sun is out in this game. 50 degrees, but with the wind, definitely feeling a lot colder out there. A lot of the mishandling you're seeing most likely is caused by just how cold it is out there. So 1-1 one, one count, two away. The pitch almost hits angle. He has to duck and get the bat down. Smart by the freshman to get the bat down as many just leave it up. And if it hits it, foul ball. So two one count bases still juice. Matthew Engelhart, the freshman, looking to make an impact. The pitch foul behind. He's on it, but fouls it away. Keeps it now. Pitcher's count two two. Cross needs one more strike to get out of the inning. And Boardman, they need to get out of this inning right now. Any more damage could prove fatal in this game. As of right now, if their average happens today, averaging 3.75, so they round it up, St. V's is already at their season average of points or runs per game. Pitch from Cross. Misses high, makes it full. A big pitch up coming from Dustin Cross on the bump. 3-2 count. Bases are loaded. Runner will go as the pitch fires off. Engelhart digging on in. Can he give... St. V's an even bigger advantage. The big payoff pitch from Cross. Misses outside. It's ball four. Engelhart out of first base with the RBI walk to make it now a five to one Boardman lead or Boardman deficit. And now we're back to the eight hitter. Kam Kamzarian. So Kamzarian. Grounds it out to end the first, his last time up. He will be the ninth batter of the inning for St. V's. Cross will take a second and step off of the mound to regather. 5-1 St. V's lead. Cross sets and delivers. In the zone, nothing will count to begin the at-bat. And now, once again, action in the Boardman bullpen. Would not be surprised if this is not the last batter of the inning that we do see that change made. Cross will deliver, and it hits him. Second hit by pitch of the inning, and this will make it a 6-1 ball game. Here comes Coach Gabriel, and we will most likely have a call to the bullpen. He hands the baseballs off and will now go and see his pitcher, they're calling him over. It will be a pitching change for the Spartans as they now find themselves down 6-1. to one. St. V's four runs so far in the inning. The bases are still loaded. This call the bullpen will bring us to a timeout where we will then hear a word from our sponsors. MDG Flooring Incorporated. Their professional staff is excited at is excited at MDG Flooring America to get to know you and help with all of your floor covering needs. They offer in-home services and are very experienced with commercial flooring jobs as well. MDG Flooring America is more than just a flooring specialty store. They are experts trained in flooring sales and design and will help you find the perfect floor for the way you live. Visit their website at https forward slash 
www.mdgflooringamerica.com forward slash Jenny's Old Fashioned Popcorn. With great customer and vendor relations, Tom and Jennifer's goal is to continue to provide the fantastic snacks that customers have come to expect from the many, the many poppy popcorn products. From everything from caramel to cheddar, they have over 39 fantastic flavors, including dittos for the kiddos. You can find them anywhere popcorn is sold, including Giant Eagle and Mark's. West Side Flea. It began with an idea to offer creative, talented vendors an affordable venue to showcase their items in the West Side suburbs, a market where everyone could attend for free and find items at all price points. A free fun day for the whole family, including pets on leash. Frankie's Italian Cuisine. Looking for a place to enjoy a post-game meal? Love Italian food? Frankie's Italian Cuisine has you covered from meatball to lasagna. Visit them tonight at 4641 Great Northern Boulevard in North Olmstead. Village Coffee and Creamery. The, from the founders of Nancy's Main Street Diner comes Village Coffee and Creamery. They have everything from dessert, lunch items, and coffee to ice cream and every kind of sweet treat you can think of. Located at 486 Main Street in Grafton, Ohio. Maxim Lacrosse. Maxim Lacrosse will demand players embody the game by giving and receiving respect and understanding that character counts. They are the proud sponsors of all Key on Sports Lacrosse coverage. Visit their website at https forward slash maximlacrosse.com forward slash. It appears we're about ready to get back underway after about a pitch or two more of the warm ups. Your call to the bullpen will now see the junior Mason Naraki. Step on to the bump and try to get Boardman out of this jam. The junior, number 19, Mason Naraki. Stepping in for St. Vincent St. Mary, number 12, Sammy Robinson. So Sam Robinson back in the box, had a base hit his first time up and then scored after having some wizardry on the bases with two away and St. V's leading 6-1. Can he add on to the advantage? Low and outside, 1-0 count to begin the at-bat. Naraki, a taller pitcher than the prior two, has more of a downhill pitching approach. Comparison is definitely different based off that pitch. Naraki sets and delivers down. Chops, but finds his zone to even it up. Robinson looking to improve upon St. V's five run advantage. The run rule is 10 after five, I believe 15 after four. The pitch. This is outside. 2 1 count. Robinson, the 10th batter of the inning, already batted, like I said, in this inning. If he gets on, he goes back to the top with Milkovic. Or Milkovic. 2 1 count. Naraki deals. Does misses off the plate. 3 1 count. Bases still loaded. Kamzarian, Engelhart, along with Sloan on the base path. Here comes a free one from Naraki. Finds a zone. There'll be a payoff pitch upcoming as he fights back. It's a 3 2 count. Seven one or top of the third inning. One of the two outcomes after the payoff pitch. Naraki trying to get out of this big jam. The pitch fouled away by Robinson. He's starting to get some good contact on it. We'll see the payoff once again. Naraki getting the sign from his catcher. He will come and set. 3-2, two, two-way, bottom of the second, the payoff. Followed away once again by Robinson, so we will now have a third payoff pitch. All credit to Robinson today so far. Sam Robinson, not only in the box but on the bases, has played well today. Got himself in a couple of jams, but his speed has prevailed each of the times it's happened. And even on this at-bat alone, two solid foul cuts that have kept him in this at bat and is now getting him to another opportunity to straighten it out. 
Now Rocky, he will come set to try and retire the side. Loses him. Robinson, a base hit and a walk this inning, will jog on over to first with an RBI walk, which now makes it 7-1, to one, St. Vincent, St. Mary. And now Max Milkovich sets up for his third time in two innings, oh, yeah, reach on an error and a walk thus far. Milkovich. He has scored on each of his two plate appearances thus far. So the last five batters, hit by pitch, infield fly, walk, hit by pitch, walk. Out of play foul, nothing in one counts. Begin the third at bat of the game for Milkovich as we're back to the top of the lineup. Looking at the time, it's 12.42, so just under two hours until first pitch of the next game. St. V's a strategy game of keeping everyone as fresh as possible for that next game to make sure you take both of the doubleheader. And Rocky will come set once again. 1-1 one, one count on Milkovich. The delivery. Sees it in. 1-2 count. Four minutes and a long inning. They're trying to get out of it. Another arm once again up in the bullpen. 1-2. Now Rocky to finally get the Spartans out of the inning. It's lined to the left side. It's a high holder. And will be caught over to finally retire the side, but not before St. V's can add five runs on their tally. It's 7-1 going into the third inning. We'll step aside and back on in a minute. As we return to Skills Field, we'll get you one quick little sponsor read here. Yeah, Actually, no, we're not going to. We're not going to have time to. Nonetheless, we're back in the third inning. St. B's, the sky's open for them in the bottom of the second. Five runs scored as they now lead 7-1. to one. I am Nathan Steve. We're just tuning in to this afternoon's contest. The pitch from Sloan down the middle. Nothing on one count to begin this at bat on Iker. Iker... Kerlick, if he is still going to bat, as it looks like he will most likely bat. The pitch chopped to the left side. It will remain foul. So now nothing in two count on Iker, who reached on an error over at third to be in his first at bat. Boardman, their only run of the game, coming back in the first on an RBI single from the shortstop, Ivan Rudiak. 
since then, it's been all saying these seven unanswered. Sloan, come set to delivery. Just misses low. One, two counts, so Iker will see another pitch. And over to our left, some of Holy Names team starting to make their appearances here at St. V's. The pitch. Chop to the right side. Pitcher feeling play? Pitcher feeling play. That's why you practice them. Tyler Sloan gets out number one. If you're a player who plays baseball or did, you know, especially at the high school level, coaches will make you practice that exact situation, and that's why. Tyler that is the third put out that I have given credit to for Sloan. Two like that that were chopped to that side. The third one was the one where he turned through to third and got in a rundown that ended up working well. As Kroll steps in for his second cuts, he gets a little bit of a wake-up call that runs in on a 1-0 count. So far today on one at bat, he has flown out to center field. He pitched in the first inning but was pulled in favor of Dustin Cross. Sloan. Comes set and delivers. This is outside. Crable does a nice job just to kind of fling the glove out there to keep in front of him. This is now 2 0 count. Sloan will set on the mound once again. 2 0 count. The pitch. Set up the middle on the ground. Shortstop gets a piece, but will go into the outfield. Layman laid out for it, but it will be a one-out single for Tyler Kroak, the designated hitter. Layman did all he could. There's a reason why last week he was the Summit County Athlete of the Week, and at St. V's now have two guys nominated for that honor once again this week after their impressive trip in Myrtle Beach that saw them dominate the competition. This week, you have Devin Lehman once again and Daniel Crable being nominated for Summit County Athletes of the Week. Sloan will set. The pitch. Runs in once again. 1-0 count. Some of this inning, Sloan trying to find that inside corner, not trying to get anything over the plate. He really just has to pitch to Boardman if he really doesn't want to. The 1-0. It evens up a one and one. Ball. Whippo trying to spark something on here for the Spartans. Sloan will set. Checks his shoulder and the pitch. This is the low two one count. Right now for St. V's, just kind of stay in the game. Sloan doesn't need to do anything crazy here. Just keep doing what he's been doing the last couple of innings. Get to the next one. End this game as soon as you can and go rest before the next game. Finds a zone. Makes it now 2-2. And a lot of getting into that next game will depend on the offense doing their job as well. As we're just around an hour 20 in, we're still not really that far along in the game as we're two and one-sixth of an inning done. Head to the quick scaling up math from a half inning up to a full inning. So two-two count, one away on Whippo. The pitch from Sloan. Sends up the middle into center field, and it's easily corralled in by Milkovich for out number two. Perfectly hit to him, barely had to move. And now that will bring up the shortstop, Ivan Rudiak, who last time up had an RBI Rudiak. single. Number 13, Ivan Rudiak. Sloan will come set on the mound after checking over at second base. He will deal. Runs in, finds a zone, nothing in one count. So the boardman looking at the score. This team is still a good team, winning against East Ridge and Florida. Howland, tough loss, 10-4. to Canfield, tough loss, 5-0. Tough loss, 14-8 to North Gwinnett. 
but they're the 20th ranked team in Georgia who currently sits at 21 and 3. So they've played some really tough opponents as of late as Rudiak sends it up the gut. The toss to second is in time. Nice work from the middle infielders of St. V's to go into the bottom third unscathed. We'll take a break here and step aside. Be back on momentarily for our final read. Three. This broadcast is sponsored by Lally's Handyman Service. From deck and fence building to indoor and outdoor remodeling, Lally's Handyman Service has you covered. Matt and his crew have been out to Vince's home many numerous times for a multitude of services and have hit a home run every time. Repair, replace, and remodel with Lally's Handyman Service. Give them a call at 216-789-2047. That is 216-789-2047. Got you covered, Avon. Their team of experienced design consultants are, exper are experts in helping you find the right window treatments for your home or business. Swing by their showroom at 2525 Nagel Road, Avon, to see yourself, see for yourself how they can make your entire living room or any room look better with a few small suggestions at a low cost. You can also find them online at gotchacovered.com forward slash Avon. That is gotchacovered.com forward slash Avon. Rue Grasso Accounting and Tax Services. Your taxes and accounting needs must be handled by the very best so you can rest easy. You can have that comfort of knowing your money is being handled by the experts of Rue Grasso Accounting and Tax Service. They prepare individual, corporate, nonprofit, and small business tax returns. They also specialize in investment accounting and managing clients' QuickBooks with over $275 million in assets accounted for. Located in Avon, they prepare your federal, state, and city return, which includes e-file and direct deposit. Please visit their website at www.lugrassotax.com for more information. That's www.lugrassotax.com for more information. Back for the bottom of the third inning at Skeels Field at St. V's, up 7-1 to one over the Boardman Spartans. If you're just tuning in, I am Nathan Smith on the call for you this afternoon. St. V's, they have dominated today from Really, the start of their at bats, the game switch. I was at the top of the first. Boardman had the RBI single for Rudy X. That had them a one nothing advantage heading in as that ball is lined in the left and is over the head of the left fielder for a base hit. Rounding for extra bases is Hurley. He will jog into second base and take a look. He will trot on back, but man, oh man! And there's the sketch celebration over at second base from Ryan Hurley. What's up, brother? Have fun at second base. And now Daniel Cravel steps up for his third cuss of the afternoon. It was bound to happen at some point today to see the new social media trend of Sketch make an appearance. Here it is in the bottom of the third with a missile sent to left. Now Krabel, grounded out and flown out, looks to move Hurley along the bases. Rocky checks, followed behind by Crable. Nothing in one count to begin the at-bat. Now Rocky returning from pitching last inning as well. He is the third Boardman pitcher that has pitched today. So far, right now, no action in the Boardman bullpen as of right now. Now Rocky, he will come set, check over his shoulder, and deliver. Line to the right side this time. Crable and Hurley trade sides of the outfield as Hurley trots on home, slides head first to give St. Vincent St. Mary an 8-1 advantage over the board mid Spartans. When it rains, it pours, and it is pouring at Skeels Field. Nice hit by Crable. Once again, finds a gap. They traded sides, as I said. That's some good baseball right there. We're seeing the sticks get hot at the right time for St. V's. They want to end this game as early as they can, and this is helping them get closer to that run rule. The PA announcer's back. Might have to tell him when he was out of the box, it started hitting really well. Look at that. Now here we go once again. Chopped up the gut. This could be two. It goes right through the shortstop's legs as Rudyak couldn't get down on it. That might be an error on the shortstop, but nonetheless, Lehman, the Summit County Player of the Week from last week, reaches on a first pitch single. 
Now it goes to the pitcher, Sloan, who's in for his yeah, third cuts. Walked and hit by pitch so yeah, far. With those kind of at-bats, you can call him Brandon Geyer, formerly of the Indians back in 2016. Remember, his nickname was Pincushion for a reason. He got on base. Was it a hard 90? Yes, but he got on base. 1-0 counts to begin his third at-bat as Naraki misses. And there is some now action in the Boardman bullpen. It's Caden Mayhew, the junior, warming up. Now Rocky checks back over at second and delivers. Misses high. 2-0 count to begin the at-bat on Sloan. Not away. Two on for Sloan. Now Rocky checks over his shoulder, delivers low. 3-0 count. Due up next is Zach Kirky, who has walked and last time retired on an infield fly. Now Rocky, he will come set 3-0 count. The pitcher Sloan finds the low zone. 3-1 count. So Naraki has something to work with, and Sloan still has to see another pitch. Now an 8-1, three away from the run rule in five innings. The pitch from Naraki. Misses outside, set on the bases for the third inning in a row are juiced. As now Zach Kirky, the third baseman, is up for his third cuts. Due up next after him is Matthew Engelhart, yeah, who has really had a tough day at the office. Two bases loaded situations, had an excellently hit ball to the right side, snagged out of thin air, and then a walk. He's played well. It's just unfortunate that the second baseman, Varley, on one play, just leapt out of his shoes and got it. The pitch from Naraki misses low and outside. 1 0 count to begin this at bat on Kirky. And see over to the left, more and more of Holy Names players starting to show up as they look on the pitch. And as well, adding on to them, Holy Names coach Mike Massetta, the new head coach replacing Tim Carter after last year, also has made his appearance. You'll see them play St. V's. And Holy Name Athletics YouTube, that game has the first pitch scheduled for 2.30 p.m. still here at Skills Field. Now Rocky, he will set. Bases juice behind him, 2-0 count. Will deal. Sent up the middle and once again caught at second base. A double play solely done by Varley for two outs. Wow. He might be Fernando Tatis out there at second base. Man. And now Matthew Engelhardt steps into the box, but if the first one wasn't a web gem, this one definitely was. No words. No words. That's fair play over at second base from Tommy Varley. Borman might be down seven, but he is still playing his heart out completely. You got to love it. Two absolute snags that have prevented a good probably combined three runs now. The pitch from Naraki finds the zone. Nothing in one count. Can this spark some of a comeback from the Spartans? It's now runners at the corners opposed to loaded. And Rocky will check over his left shoulder and check to his right as well and deliver. Misses outside as it curled on in, evens it up at one and one on Engelhart. Engelhart third on the team in slugging with a 562 slugging percentage behind Lehman and Crable, the senior captains. Now Rocky kicks and deals. Shop to the left side. It can be a tough throw to make. And he makes it with ease to retire the side. St. V's low to the bases once again. But somehow in some way, Tommy Varley yeah, made an absolute reserve. snag. Got a double play. Yeah, and then a simple throw three. across the diamond from third base no retires the side. And We're going to go into the fourth the inning with St. V's leading 8-1.
one quick sponsor before we get the action back underway. Great Lakes Training. Great Lakes Basketball caters to athletes of all ages and experience levels with a wide variety of training techniques. Book your first session today at www.greatlakesbasketball.com or email Coach J at Coach J at greatlakesbasketball.com. Number 25, senior Brian Conti. So now in the box for Boardman is Brian Conti, the C Ryan Conti. Wait, hold on. First pitch strike. There we go. Nothing in one count. The pitch. This is outside. One one count. There we go, we have confirmation. It's Ryan Conti in the box now for Herman, who in his first at-bat struck out. He hits it into the outfield towards center field, and it's easily caught out straight away by Milkovich for out number one. So in that last inning, you saw him make that put out, Conti, over to first base. On the floor. As we will see Varley, who has had an exit. Well, not Varley had the nice catch a couple innings ago, and then the one last inning, that was the double play. Swing and a foul tip. Nothing will count to begin this at bat for Varley, who walked his only plate appearance thus far. So, ground right side of the infield. Throw over too large at first is in time for out number two. Tamzarian, the easy chuck. Two up, two down for the Spartans. And now that will bring up the catcher, Charlie Young, for his second cuts of the now afternoon. Now for Boardman, number four, Charlie Young. Young in his first at bat had a sacrifice bunt that moved the runner up second. Sloan has done an excellent job settling in, has given up one hit since the first inning. Swing and a miss as Young swings through it. Nothing in one count. Sloan getting set quickly. Wants to get out of this inning as soon as possible. Oh, going to say a miss low. Evens it up at one and one. An excellent miss. Just going to miss a little bit low. So it evens it up at one and one. Sloan has to work a little bit harder to get out of this inning. He will set and deliver. And once again, misses low in that same spot. Conti smiling. He thinks he's out of the inning. Instead, it's a 2-1 count. Sloan comes set. Now the pitch. This is high. 3-1 count. Due up next for Boardman is Connor the nine hitter. Sloan taking a second here to gather himself after going up 0-1. Has thrown three balls in a row. The get right. Finds a zone. 3-2 count. Just a little bit higher than the other two that missed. So it's a full count on the batter. Young. Sloan will set and deliver. Finds the zone as it nicks the corner for strike three, looking to retire the side. The Spartans, for the first time today, go in order. It's St. V's dominating 8-1. to one. We'll step aside and be back on in a minute. This broadcast is brought to you by Every Step Senior. Every Step Seniors. Every Step Seniors is a full service relocation service helping seniors to downsize and move. They handle every step of the way, including packing, moving, setup, 
home cleanouts, donations, and home sale prep services. Look them up online today at www.everysteppseniors.com. 410 Painting. A great paint job will help double your property's worth and feel. Looks are everything when it comes to a great first impression, and Brent Thielen of 410 Painting understands that. His quality work can be seen at every level at 410 Painting, and his dedication and quality you can see. Nurse Practitioner Health Services of Strongsville. Do you want the Term care and assisted living facilities in northeastern Ohio. Come to find out more. Lily Rose by Melissa Soa. Sick of battling with pesky hair ties that give you a headache, constantly breaking and damaging your hair. Fed up with the endless readjusting because they just won't stay put. This team at Lily Rose is committed to giving you quality, comfortable, and affordable hair accessories and essential to help you enjoy everyday beauty. Find out more by visiting Lilla Rose by Melissa on Facebook or online at lillarose.com forward slash msoa. A couple more sponsor reads to go through real quick. Carrie Mosco LLC. Carrie Mosco is an Ohio licensed independent social worker, psychotherapist, and mental performance mastery coach who has been providing therapy to young women and teens for over 16 years. She specializes in empowering young women in their late teens, 20s, and early 30s to gain mastery over their mind. She will help you to manage anxiety, heal trauma, and improve self-esteem while building healthy habits to support strong mental health and stress management skills. Mental training will help you stay strong, healthy, and enjoy your sports for the long term. Seek your reach at Carrie at CarlyMoscow.com. We'll have four or five sponsors to go through at the next break. Sophomore number 21, Brian Meeper, stepping in for St. Vincent St. Mary, leading off the bottom of the fourth inning. Number four, Ashton Tanzarian. On the bump for Foreman right now is Ryan Meeper, as he is the next relief pitcher going in for Foreman as Tamzarian Robinson and Milkovich do up this inning for St. V's. First pitch hit to the right side and foul. Nothing will count to begin this at bat. So far today for Tamzarian, grounds it out to third base and was hit by a pitch. I believe this will be the fourth pitcher of the afternoon for Boardman. Nefer comes set. Will wind and deliver. This is high. Evens it up at one and one. St. Vs today, they have really dominated this game as I think many of them expected to do going into today. Seven and one record, as I said it before, 8.5 runs per game on average. They're at eight right now as this pitch is fouled away, one two count. But their wins, they just have really good wins. Greater Latrobe. Beating them 5 nothing, 67th ranked team in PA. Orville and Norton, both teams in Ohio that have, I believe, below 500 or around 500 records. Russell of Kentucky, they beat 5-4. to Abelville is the 8th ranked team in South Carolina. Rand Rome, 14-4. Sweet Home in New York beat 9 day And then Oskego, the 32nd ranked team in Ohio that took care of in Myrtle Beach. Strike out number one from Nefer as he gets Tamzarian looking for out number one. And looking at the stat sheet, that is the first strikeout thrown by a Boardman pitcher of the afternoon. The pitch is now batting for St. Vincent St. Mary. Number 20, senior Aiden Twistler. Now a substitution being made for St. V's. As Lizzo, the senior, will step in for his first cuts, retrieving the spot of Robinson. Nefer will come set. Now the pitch. Foul right behind in the netting. Nothing in one count. And now you're starting to see the substitutions from St. Vincent St. Mary. Knowing they have a game after this photo play. Just trying to keep their players as fresh as possible going into game two of the doubleheader. Especially going against a team who was rested who did not have to play before this. And has not played in a couple of days. Finds a zone. Nothing in two counts. 
Holy Name's last game was definitely one that alerted St. V's their potential. Playing a tough St. Ed's team 7-4 to four at Crushes on Wednesday. Last game that they ended up playing in today. We'll have to get back out there and look for win number one in the Coach Rosetta era. That game at 2.30. Oh, two swing and a miss. So after no strikeouts through three, Ryan Niefer has two strikeouts and two batters. An impressive turnaround that now sees Milkovich step Ryan back up. For the Irish, number seven, Max Milkovich. So Milkovich in three appearances so far, reached on an error, walked, and flew out to left field in his last at bat. Neifer will come set, wind and deliver. Bunt being shown, pulled back, 1-0 count to begin this at bat. Boardman, the way they're playing right now and pitching, looking good. The offense is still not a completely drawn game. They still have time. They still have nine outs to work with. They put up two runs in each inning. They're back in. Ground ball right back to Neifer. The Spartan get the Fighting Irish to go in order as we go into the fifth. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Ryan Neifer as St. B still leads 8-1. We'll step aside for a second. Put me in, coach. Actually, no, that's why I don't play baseball anymore. I wasn't so good. Let's do some sponsor reads instead. Why not? Let's have some fun. Maryland Bloomfield Realtor. Marlene will go above and beyond to provide the highest and professional services to you and your family with all of their home buying or selling needs. She wants to help you find your new forever home with ease. She is a fantastic realtor and genuinely has your best interests in mind. She can be reached at 440-822-0611 or swing by and visit her in person at 26107 Detroit Road in Westlake. Christine Dort Photography, from sports to real life photos, don't let a big event go by without Christine Dort there to photograph it. Find her today on Facebook or at www.christinedortphotography.com for all your photo needs. Aspen Property Services. Aspen Property Services is celebrating their fifth year anniversary and offering a new 10% discount off of new landscaping slash hardscaping projects booked by May 31st. Call and ask for Radio details at 720-720-215-1786. That's 720-215-1786. If you want your yard to look perfect, leave it up to the pros of Aspen Property Services. As we step back into the contest, T-Rex Steel's field is 8-1 in favor of St. Vincent and St. Mary. I am Nathan Sneed on the call for you this afternoon. First pitch of the inning from Sloan runs in. 1-0 count to begin the at-bat on Connor. one count the pitch. You heard a little banging. Adam Humanick of Holy Name just walked by. I had a good little knock on the glass for my lab partner. He did not pay attention to me. It was a very sad day. <laughs> one one count here. Sloan will come back set and deliver. Connor fouls it to the left side. He now is down one and two. So here's the situation right now. We're in the fifth inning. If St. Bees turns around after allowing no runs this inning and scores three, ball game over. Boardman goes back to Youngstown. St. Bees gets right ready for game two of the doubleheader. If they don't, we play on the sixth. Basically, right now, the way this game's looking, there's a good chance we play seven innings. 
and given how this game started, that would never have thought back going into the third inning when it was 7-1. to one. But the defense of Boardman has really improved. Credit to them for staying in this game. Many teams would have sat there and given up in this game. Chopped over the pitcher, Sloan. Goes to second base. Give me tough. No contest. It's an infield single for Connor. Sloan couldn't get a glove on it, and neither could Varley in time. So the leadoff man's aboard for the Spartans. And now Marty Satchewitz steps back into the box for his third cuts. A ground out and a strikeout so far today. It looked like Coach Shepard was about to go make a change, but in the end, we'll say no. As of right now, if I'm Coach Shepard, I would not try to put another arm in this game. You're not going to have Sloan pitch in game two of a doubleheader. If he can finish this game, let him finish the game. Don't worry about it. It's the first batter, it's on them. It's fine. You're leading by seven. Let him finish the game and leave your bullpen for the next game. There is someone warming up in the bullpen, but the last time they played only game, the bullpen was the difference in the game. Swing and a miss as Satchewitz swings through it. Nothing in one count to begin his at bat. And with Sloan pitching the way he has today, he's off the back of his first one, two, three inning. That's not the time to pull the pitcher. His first hit he's given up since the third. And nonetheless, we play on the pitch. Just misses low, evens it up at one and one. around the two-hour mark, hour 50 on my count. The pitch. Hit to the right side and foul. Out of play. One-two count on Sashiewicz. After him is Grayson Eicher, the first baseman, due up for his third cut to the ballgame. Sloan will peer on in, waiting for his signal. We'll get it. Here comes his 1-2 offering to Satchewitz. Finds the zone, gets him looking for strike three and out number one of the inning. An excellent get right at bat. Got him looking on the corner, the stood like a statue, three. and now we see Eicher. Grayson Eicher for the third time today. The lone Spartan to touch home today as he reached on an error back in the first and then most recently in the third inning grounded out to begin it. In the first inning, he was a second hitter. And this next time he was up, he was the first. This time he's the third. In the no man's land, and it falls for a base hit. Perfectly placed. The slide's in time as Satchwitz is in. Or correction, Connors is in. But a little bit of a bloop single for Eicher. It was awkward off the bat, but sometimes that's all you need to do. And now two ducks on the pond with one away for Kerlick, who had a base hit his first time, or last time up, I should say. First time up, he flew out to center. Can Boardman start getting some runs together and get this game competitive? <coughs> Sloan will set, checks his back, and will deliver. Misses low, blocked by Krebel. Makes it now 1-0 count. Two on with one away for the Spartans, who look to try and get back into this game. They still have a chance to do so. Checks his shoulder a couple times and delivers. He did offer. Evens it up at one and one. <coughs> Sloan just trying to battle on through this game. Get out of this inning with two on early in it based on two singles. One that stayed in the infield, and then one bloop. It's hit to the right side. It's playable. Over at first is large as he gets it with a hand against the fence for out number two. Does not lose it in the sun and helps out his pitcher. So now that will lead to Landon Whipple, the left fielder, stepping up for his third cuts. One for two on the day with a base hit and a fly out to center. Whippo looking to get an RBI, has an opportunity to do so. Depending on where he can hit this ball, the trajectory of the game might change. Whippo will take a second to gather himself. St. Vincent St. Mary just trying to get out of this inning and go into the bottom where the offense has the power just to end the game right then and there. 
checks a couple times and delivers. Swing and a miss. Nothing in one count to begin this at bat on Whippo. Going into today, Sloan, 13 strikeouts on the campaign. Today he has four. So now if he completes this full inning, he'll have 19 innings of work with 17 Ks in three appearances. Chop behind foul. So quickly, Whippo is down nothing in two. Do up next for Boardman if Whippo does not end the inning is Rudiak, who has the RBI single back in the first and also a ground out to his name, <clears throat> along with a couple of nice diving efforts. Sloan has been solid all afternoon for the Fighting Irish. Can he continue to fight on and retire the side? It's an 0-2 count, two on, two away in the top of the fifth. The pitch misses outside. Tried to get him a swing at something in the other's box. Keeps it now. A competitive at bat, one and two. It only takes one for Boardman. It only takes one for St. V's. One hit, one pitch. Sloan will set. Here comes the one-two. Pops up. It's skied. It can stay in play. It's near that fence over at third. And it's not lost in the sun. Retiring the side over at third is the substitution's whistler as he comes on in and catches it to retire the side. Arch correction, no, that's me, Kirky over at third base, who For takes it in. Fifth, We're right. going to go into the bottom of the fifth with St. V's up 8-1. to one. We'll step aside. This broadcast is brought to you by Aspen Property Services. Aspen Property Services is celebrating their five-year anniversary and offering 10% off new landscaping slash hardscaping products. Oh, we did that one just to kind of go and rehash that one. So it was kind of cut off at the end. You can call them at 720-215-1786. There we go. Now we're down to the last couple here. PG3 Photography. Some of the very best sports action shots can be found at PG3 Photography. They specialize in lacrosse and women's sports, but I've covered everything from the state championships to the USFL. Then LDR Ship 216. If you're looking to get back in shape, stay in shape, or get in even better shape, then your next call needs to be to LDR Ship 216, as PJ Gordon knows nutrition and knows how to set you up on the right path. Look him up today at, on Facebook at https forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash pj.gordon.14. Then a bunch of stuff. There you go. Just go look up PJ Gordon on Facebook. You will find him. Thank you to all of our Keon Sports sponsors for making these broadcasts possible and making them free for you along with our written content. Now enjoy the rest of this broadcast ad free. We'll get back to the action in Akron, Ohio. Hurley, Crable, and Lehman do up this inning for St. V's. Their task is simple. Three runs, and they win this game 11-1 as they would achieve the run rule. That's the goal right now. The pitch. Finds a zone from Niefer. Nothing one counted again this at bat. Seth Dry and Niefer has entered the ball game for Boardman. Things have changed. One, two, three inning. It was good. He did well with two strikeouts. The first two of the game from Boardman's side of things. Line two, second base. If it's hit to Tommy Borley, do we even need to see the rest of the play? Just put the out on the board. He is a lead over at second base for out number one. 
just consistently gets hit the ball and consistently sees it into the yeah, glove and makes the play. There you go. So that's what you need over at second base. They have a sure glove. St. V's, on the other hand, they now have two pitchers warming up in the bullpen. I assume one's for this game, and I assume whoever's going to start the next game most likely is warming up for it. As on my watch, we are now at about that two-hour mark. My official watch, hour 56 since the game started. So about an hour until the next one. Runs inside, 1-0 count to begin this at bat on Crable. The catcher so far today grounded out, flew out, and has a base hit. So two for three on the afternoon. Here comes the pitch from Beefer. Misses outside. 2-0 count with one away. Boardman has no action right now in their bullpen. Content with Niefer writing out this as he has gotten the last four outs in a row. Four batters face, four putouts. Niefer will set, will wind. And deliver. Hit to the left side off the netting and foul. Makes it now a 2 1 count. So now 2 1 count, one away in the bottom of the fifth. St. V's three runs away from winning the game. Boardman trying to get this game to go into the sixth and continue to tire St. V's. The wind and the delivery. Sent to the right side, over to Barley. Easy flick on over to first base for out number two as Iker stretches to greet it. Two up, two down, two put away by Barley over at second base. And now Devin Lehman, the shortstop, is up. Reach on an error twice and a base hit today to his name. So Niefer, so far, still perfect. Five for five on retiring the batters he's faced. And this is the heart of the lineup. Hurley, Crable, and Lehman. That is the heart of this St. V's team. If he can get them in order as well, just impressive work from the pitcher. 1-0 count to begin this at bat. Takes a second, gets a sign from his catcher young behind the plate. And now delivers. Swing and a miss on kind of a chopped cut to even it up at one and one. No base runners have reached the base path since Sloan walked back in the third. So it's been, it's been consecutive. We're nearing, this would be the eighth in a row. So now we're at seven <coughs> putouts in a row from Boardman. A 2-1 count now on the shortstop. The wind and the delivery from Niefer. Finds the zone low. 2-2 two -two count now on Lehman. Crable looking for strikeout number three on the afternoon. He would own all three strikeouts from Boardman's side. Niefer will come set the 2-2. Two -two. He gets some looking down the middle. Wait, no, you're going to say it's up. Wow, we're going to see a payoff pitch. From my angle, that looked like a meatball. So here we are, 3-2, full count, two away. Niefer will try again and retire Lehman. Here's his delivery. It's lined in the left field. It's extra bases for Lehman. It will fall in the gap. He's rounding first, going to two. And he will hold up at two. So it's a two-out double for Devin Lehman, who gets the first hit off of Ryan Niefer and has St. V's in business in the bottom of the fifth. So now up comes Tyler Sloan. Tyler Sloan. He walked his last time up. Has reached all three times. Two walks and a hit by pitch. With a little bit of a base hit, he could potentially send Lehman home. Lehman today, two errors and two base hits. So, and four plate appearances, he's reached each time. Finds the corner, 0-1 oh, no, oh count to begin the at-bat. 
He thought Boardman was not happy about that call on the 2-2 pitch. Looked like it was a really good pitch from our angle. But nonetheless, we play on. Lehman trying to move over at second. Shot behind by Sloan. He's quickly down, nothing and two. Oh, 2 count on Sloan. Has a runner in scoring position to try and give himself some more insurance. Has seven runs to work with with an 8-1 advantage in hand. Runner goes. The step off is in time. And he's safe. He gets around the slide. Cole Devin Lehman, Javi Baez, the way he gets around the tag. Boardman not happy, but I think the call's right. I think he slid around it. Is that Devin Lehman or Sam Robinson on the base pass? I don't know. Now, Boardman's coach is going out there to, to get a call. But it looked like the way he could portion his body, he got around it. The throw was definitely in time. There is no debate on if the throw was in time. It's just a pure debate on if the tag got down, and I don't think it did. I'm trying to pull up the clip now to see it. It's hard to tell from our angle. I think he got around the tag. Tough call to make, but now Layman's over at third. I think it's the right call. A tough one to make, but still an 0-2 count on Sloan. So the job is not done. No runs are guaranteed. Can Nefer get out of it? The pitch. Misses high. 1-2 count. Due up next for St. V's in the event Sloan gets on is the third baseman, Kirky. Nefer comes set. It's a 1 2, delivers. Ground ball up the gut. And it's kept in the infield, but it's an RBI single nonetheless. An excellent effort over at short by Rudy to try to keep it. But Tyler Sloan gives himself an extra run to work with. It's now 9-1 to one in favor of the Fighting Irish. And that run was set up perfectly by an excellent hit from Lehman. An excellent base running from him. Ran was unaccounted for. Got the third and has done his job. And now the winning run is at the plate. St. V's leads by eight. Two more runs in this inning, then this game can be over. If not, we go into the sixth. Nefer deals. Finds the zone. Nothing will count to begin this at bat on Kirky. Englehart, the designated hitter, is due up next for St. V's. A tough hitter. He's a freshman, but he's still playing really well this year. Three doubles on the campaign, so... If Kirky gets on and gets in a good enough position, a base hit from Englehart could end the game. But as of right now, Kirky fighting for his life. It's a nothing and two count. Two inside pitches finding the zone. Nefer checks over to his left. Will come set two away. Here comes the 0-2 delivery. Runner goes, line to the left side, base hit for Zach Kirky. It's smoked, but cut off in left field. The runner will go to third. He will be safe, and Kirky quickly retreats. Sloan at third, Kirky at first. It's runners at the corners for Matthew Englehart now, who could potentially end the game. Boardman thought they had their strike three, but now it's 9-1, to one, and we'll have a mound visit from Boardman. The full infield will go on in. We'll step aside for a brief moment here. St. V's 9-1 to lead.
Mound visit has concluded, and now Matthew Engelhart will step into the box. Center, number 14, Matt Engelhart. Engelhart, if he hits the ball far enough, the game is over. St. V's two runs away from ending the game as the run rule is 10 after 5. They have two outs, and the first two outs of this inning were the first two batters. Since then, a double, RBI single, and a single. Be an error from Rudiak, and now the game with the winning run at second base. Once again, the cold gets to him, and we're back to where we started this inning. So now Tim Zarian, who has been hit by a pitch, yeah. struck out looking Number and grounded out, Tim has Zarian. a chance to end the game. It's ten to one, so St. V's leads by nine. Next run they score would be it. After Nefer started out perfect in this inning and in his really outing, he had five in a row retired as a runs and almost hits Tamzarian. Since then, he's lost control. Three hits, one, at least one run, and then an error. So there's two runs in the air. Nefro comes check, set, checking back over at second base and deals. Lined up the middle of it. Game. They're going to send him. Sloan, he could be a dead zone. The play of the plate is in time. An excellent center field to retire the St. Vincent St. Mary's side and keep the game alive. We're going to go into the sixth inning, ladies and gentlemen.
Ivan Rudiak steps back into the box for Boardman as we begin the sixth inning. We play on in this game. Swing and a miss on the first pitch he sees from Sloan. Nothing in one count. St. Bees was a couple feet away from ending the game, but in the end, a throw from center field courtesy of Satchwitz kept the game going as the tag was applied by Young well in time. Sloan has to work for another inning as two continue to warm up in the Fighting Irish bullpen. So far, he's still looking as good as he did to begin the game. So nothing in two count as Boardman now once again will have action in their bullpen. Sloan will set. Now the pitch. Blocked by Crable. Makes it now a 1-2 count. Rudy X so far today, an RBI single and a ground out. So one for two with a ribby to his name. Sloan will set the pitch. Ground ball goes to the left side of the infield. Throw across from Lehman is high, but in time to Matthew Large for out number one of the top of the sixth. Nice flashing of the leather over at short from Lehman. And now Conti steps into the box for his second cuts of the afternoon. He flew out in his first. Sloan will come set and deliver. This is low 1-0 count to begin the at-bat. Sloan so far today has the four Ks that we mentioned still looking for his fifth on the afternoon. So far combined between the teams only have seen six strikeouts. Pitch, pitch misses low makes it now a 2-0 count. Sloan trying to regather himself. Going to take a quick second here. Gets the call in from his catcher Crable and delivers. Finds a zone this time. A get right pitch. 2 1 count now on Conti. Boardman do all they can to continue to keep this game going. Sloan delivers. Ground ball right back to Sloan. Pitcher fielding play for out number two. So now, overall today, fielding wise, that is the fourth time that Sloan has had to put out a man on the ground. And Tommy Varley steps back into the box for his third cuts. Walked and grounded out thus far. Sloan will set and deliver. In the zone, a one count to begin the at-bat. Sloan will set once again. We can get out of this inning quick. Delivers. Runs in. Almost clips him. Evens it up at one and one. Gave him a little bit of a wake-up call in the left batter's box. Sloan will set once again. Has to be nearing or at least gotten to 100 pitches by now. Misses off the plate this time around. 2-1 count. St. V still has plenty of action in their bullpen Including, including freshman Will Tober. Pitch. Ground ball goes to the left side. Once again, the layman throws across the diamond to large, and that will retire the side. St. B's one run away from ending this game as they will go into the second part of their double header. But as of right now, it's 10 to 1, middle of six.
Leading off the bottom of the six, we think it's the same area. Number 12, Sammy Robinson. Bottom of the six here at Skeels Field, St. V's leading 10 to 1 over the Boardman Spartan by a Nathan Fiona call for you this afternoon if you're just tuning in to the broadcast. St. V's one run away from winning the game today as it would be a run rule. If not, we're going to go into the top of the seventh. On the bump now for Boardman is Landon Whippo. Whippo in one appearance, 1.11 ERA in six and one-thirds innings work against East Range back in Myrtle Beach. Robinson did not bat the last time around as he, uh, whoever batted in place of him struck out. He now steps back in. So far today, a base hit and a walk. First pitch receives a strike. Nothing on count to begin his third at bat. The one and the delivery from Whiplow. A little bit of a weird delivery fouled away on the bunt. Robinson, he was quickly down nothing and two. After Robinson, we go back to Milkovich and Rylan Hurley at the top. Whiplow comes set, the 0-2. Just misses high on Robinson, 1-2 count. Robinson so far today on the base pass has made an arguably larger impact than his base hit and walk as he did some excellent base running that forced some errors in the field. Strike three call on a pitch in the other batter's box for out number one. Now we'll go back to the top of the lineup. It's Max Milkovich in for his fifth cuss of the day. Max Milkovich. So far today, reach on an error, walk, flown out to left, and grounded out to the pitcher at that point was Niefer. Finds his zone in the right corner. Nothing on counts to begin this at bat. If you'd have told the faithful that with the seven innings of baseball, they would have told you. Has room to fall, and it finds the green grass for a base hit with one out from Max Milkovich. And the winning run is now on the base path. Now, three for four today with two base hits, and to his name steps in for his fifth cut. This is the same area number 18, Ryan Hurley. Whippo takes a second here. To gather himself will come set and deliver. Runs in and finds the inside corner. Nothing on count to begin the at bat. Boardman now I believe this is his pitcher number five on the afternoon. Runs in this time a ball one one count. Now around the two and a half hour mark of today's ball game. The pitch from Whippo. Hit in the left center and falls for a base hit. Hurley now four for five on the afternoon with his third base hit. And now two on with one away for Daniel Crable, the Oberlin man, to try and end this game. No action in the board being bullpen. Daniel Crable. St. V's, they have calmed their activity in the bullpen. Everyone who is still out there just peering on to see the end of this game. If Crable can't get the job done, Devin Lehman is due up next. Runs in. It's a little strict on Lou to get out of the way of it. 1-0 count to begin this at bat. Whippo will come set, wind, deliver. This is outside, wide, 2 0 count. Trying to see out of the corner of my eyes. St. V is getting their sustenance they're going to need for the next game in the form, I believe, Little Caesars Pizza. Not sponsored. Mega sponsors of PS Sports. Hit to the left side, tanked. 
and out of play. Make it now 2-1 count. Crable gets back into the box. The lefty trying to, with one swing of the bat, end the game. Whippo looks and delivers. Finds a zone, evens it up at two and two. <coughs> Pulling in, still warming up on one of the side fields. A couple of the coaches and a couple of players now coming over to see the end of this ball game. Whippo will come set, check over his right shoulder at second and deliver. It's tanked to the right side. Going back is the right fielder. Is he out of room? No, he makes the catch. And no tag ups will happen. So allowed out number two as it was trailed by Connor Thin Wright. Give it a give it 20 more feet, and that's a homer. Crable almost ended the game with a three-run shot. That would have made it 13 to 1. But nonetheless, here we go. Devin Lehman with two away has a chance now to end the game. If he does it, we go to the top of the seventh. Whippo will check over his right shoulder and now deliver to Lehman, who doubled his last time up. Sees it in, 1-0 count. Whippo will come set once again, takes one look over to his right and delivers. Right down the pipe, even it up at 1-1. One one. Either way, St. Vincent and St. Mary's played an excellent ball game today. You've got to give them credit. Just laying the runs on early and often. Eight runs in three innings, or two innings of work and seven runs. Just impressive, whichever way you look at this game. Especially after the way the game started as well. If you just tuned in, like, 30 minutes in, Boardman led at one point in this game. They were up one nothing going into the bottom of the first. This is off the plate once again. It's a 3-1 count. If Lehman doesn't get the job done, then the pitcher Sloan can end the game. He would be the last batter of the game, or at least of this inning. Whippo deals. Finds his own, so it's three and two. Can Whippo force the seventh inning? Takes a second to peer on in. Takes a look over to his right and comes set. The payoff. Hits off the catcher's helmet. Maybe got a piece when he swung as well, but nonetheless, 3-2 count. Officials have confiscated that baseball. And now the home plate umpire is going to walk Whippo back up to the mound. So now 3-2 count still with two away. St. B's trying to end this game. Their ba base hit ball four. That's what they're looking for here. You can tell just easily the umpire going, walking the pitcher right back up, just giving the catcher some time to regather himself. Here comes the payoff. Runners go. Ground ball left side. It's blocked over at third base, so it will load the bases as it's an infield single. So now Tyler Sloan will be the last batter of the bottom of the six, regardless of the outcome. Don't even know if you put something in the on-deck circle. Yeah, no, you don't. The action in the bullpen starts up once again for St. V's. Whippo, this will be the last batter he will face of the ballgame. He will come set and deliver. Thought about it. Blocked by the catcher, Young. 1-0 count. We are two minutes off of a two-and-a-half-hour ball game. The pitch. Ground ball left side. All you got to do is throw it somewhere. Conti, we will play into the top of the seventh inning. Somehow Boardman has done it, unless they're going to go with the time limit. There's always a chance they do that, but it looks like as of right now, we are going to play the seventh the inning of baseball. Somehow, in some way, Boardman has 
forced it. Credit to them. We'll take a break. I'll continue to join you in the top of seven. Top of the seventh inning here at Steels Field. First pitch of the game thrown by Battenhouse is a ball. It is Caden Mayhu in for his first cuts of the ball game. It'll be Connor and then Sachowicz after him. But after six innings of work, Tyler Sloan will sit back down, chops out to end the bottom of the six. So somehow in some way, Boardman have forced their way in the top of the seventh. It's lined right in the glove over at third base for out number one. Zach Kirky gets in front of it. Now two outs separate St. Jude from a win. And now Adam Connor steps back into the box for Boardman his one, third Connor. cut. The pitch from Battenhouse curves outside, 1-0 count to begin the at-bat. Still an arm warming up in the bullpen for St. Beast, most likely their pitcher for game number two. The windup and the delivery from Battenhouse. Chop to the left side, will fall for a base hit in left field, and they're going to send him. He's going to take a turn. Now he's going to retreat back to first base. Thought about taking two, but it's a one-out single for Adam Connor, his second single in a row, he is two for three on the day. And now Marty Sosiewicz steps in for his fourth cut of the game. Two strikeouts and a ground out. Boardman forced their way into this situation. Down by nine. Can they make some late noise in this game? Batten House will set. Wind and delivery. Curves in, just misses. 1-0 count to begin the at-bat. Nice challenging pitch thrown in there. Didn't curve enough for Bentonhouse. Bentonhouse pitches, lined in the right field. That could be extra bases for Satchewitz. He is going for two. Borman trying to get around the board. Will send Connor. Going to third is Satchewitz. Everyone safe all the way around. It's a one-out RBI triple for Marty Satchewitz. Boardman extended this game in the seventh. It's worth it. They have another run. This game's not over until the final Boardman, out. Boardman, number 16, Grayson Eicher. It's an eight-run game now. Who would have thought? But now here comes Eicher into the box. 
the pitch. This is 1 0 -oh count. Iker looking to move Sachowitz home. Badhouse deals. Pops behind and out of play. Evens it up at 1 and 1. So one more count. Batten House trying just to end this game and go on into the second. Home set and delivers. Hits the left side and foul. So now a one two count with one away here. The pitch. Curves and misses, evens it up at two and two. St. V's just trying to end this game as soon as they can. It's really dragged out for them. Now we're nearing the 245 mark. The pitch on the 2 2 from Baton House. Swing and a miss. The final countdown can play. One out separating St. V's from a win. Now the last hope for them is Tyler Curlick, the starting pitcher. He looks to go back up to the plate so far today. A base hit, a pop out, and a fly out. The pitch from Batten House. Runs in, finds a zone. Nothing one count to begin the at bat on Curlick. House taking a second here to get ready. He will come set after getting the call from Crable. Finds a zone. So now Borman down to their final strike. Nothing in two count. The pitch from Battenhouse. Misses low. One, two count. Ben House will come set once again. Pitch, chop left side, foul. Once again, Curlick gets another life. St. V's, they have battled. They have gone through a lot of adversity over the last couple of years. With this win, they would have more wins than they did all of last year. Batten House, chop the left side. This could do it. Kirky, book it. An excellent tag by Large. He jumps up and tags Kirklick and ends the game. St. V's wins it 10 2 2. An excellent showing from St. V's today in game one of two of this doubleheader. St. Vincent St. Mary 10, Boardman 2. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice hand for both of these clubs? Your play of the game brought to you by Keon Sports goes to none other than a starting pitcher for. St. Vincent St. Mary, Tyler Sloan, six innings pitch, one earned run, along with that four strikeouts. An excellent day on the bump from him. And as well, you got to look at his batting stats as well as he reached all but one time. An impressive day from him, not only on the bump, but in the batter's box. St. Vincent St. Mary's fans, for those of you wanting to watch the game against Hohenheim, go on over to Hohenheim Athletics YouTube, where that game will be live. First pitch expected originally at 2.30. Bump it back a little bit. But with that, that will do it here from Skills Field for game one of two of the doubleheader. I've been Nathan Smith. Thank you for sending your Saturday afternoon with us. Have a good day, everyone.